Hey everyone, it's Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Uh, over on the Fusion 360 Facebook page, there's been a lot of discussion this week about the new user interface versus the old user interface and which one is better and what are the changes and why do they have to do anything. Um, so I thought that I would do a little run through of the differences between the two and tell you why maybe I'm more of a fan of the new, new UI and where I think they're going with it and why I think it's better. So to start this video out, uh, I'm in the Fusion 360 Legacy UI. Um, eventually I'll switch over to the new UI and show you some of the things I like and don't like about that. And I'm also going to work some inventor content into this uh, to kind of demonstrate where I think they might be kind of, Autodesk being they, might be kind of taking the product. So let's take a look at some of the things that uh, I don't like about the old UI and some of the handy things that are in here. So one of the really nice things about the old UI is that I was able to go sketch. I could choose whatever command I wanted. So maybe I want to go to rectangle, center point rectangle. And then I just had to choose my plane and I was right into the command. I could type in my size and my part and uh, go ahead and stop my sketch and I'd, I'd be running. One of the things I don't like about the old UI is it's not very contextual. And what I mean is I'm sketching right now so why do I have the ability to add assembly uh, joints in here right now or to measure or create work planes or whatever it might be? I guess the measure might make a little bit of sense, but just, just different things in here that, that don't make sense when you're in a sketch. The other thing I've never been a big fan of is this sketch palette. Um, <clears throat> this takes up so much room on your screen. Uh, and all these things are currently an inventor and it doesn't take up any of the room that's on the screen. So uh, when we get later on, we'll kind of see how the inventor team does this and handles this. Um, but I'm not a big fan of having all these constraints and options over on this floating uh, palette. So those are some of the things that I really don't like about the old user interface. I do miss the ability to go sketch, rectangle, whatever it might be, and then pick my plane. Now, as you may or may not know, I do a lot of training classes, an intro to training class at uh, NYC CNC each month, and I get to see a lot of new users, which is pretty fun. But I also get to see one of the reasons why Autodesk sort of took uh, some of the features away. So what used to happen is that when you have a solid feature like that, what, what a new user would do is say they want to go to sketch, align, and then they missed the part when they wanted to sketch on this plane, they missed the part where they had to pick the plane first. And so they would just sort of intuitively think that Fusion knows I want to draw on this plane. And they'd get over close to this edge. And now when they click, they get it. And they didn't realize that, you know, visually, they were just shown that they got the wrong edge. And they would do this and they go, oh, there's the side I want to draw on. And then they draw and they'd say like, whoa, Fusion's not doing anything. What's wrong with it? But really what's happening is that line is appearing on the wrong side of the part. So Autodesk tried to make that more apparent by making the user first choose the new sketch button, which made them pick a planar first, a planar uh, face first, uh, face of an object or work plane or whatever that might be. So I wish we could somehow bring this back in the new user interface, but uh, seeing how much new users struggle with this, I understand why they removed it from the old UI. Or I, I should say, I, I understand why they removed it from the new UI and left it in the old one. One of the other things that I also know is coming uh, to Fusion is more workspaces. So if I hit the drop down here, you can see we have a patch workspace, a sheet metal workspace. Um, there's just a bunch of different workspaces here. And as they keep continuing to add more things as workspaces, it's just going to take up more and more room in this drop down list. So they've started to take some of these things like sheet metal and patch and move them to the design tab and, uh, and create their own individual tabs for them. I should say the design workspace. And then they made their own individual tabs for those commands. So kind of clean things up a little bit. So let's hop over to the new fusion 360 UI and take a look at that. Okay, so here we are in the new UI or modern UI or whatever you want to call it. And uh, you can see that things haven't changed drastically, but there are some differences for sure. 
So let's take a look at some of the differences here. One of the first things that we might notice is if we hit the workspaces, there aren't as many workspaces because a couple of those workspaces that I was talking about, like the patch environment is now called Surface and Sheet Metal had its own workspace. Now those are both on the design tab up here as their own individual tabs. Um, so as Autodesk adds more of these workspaces in here, um, they might even compartmentalize more of these things, but uh, the list isn't quite as long. As some users note, there's no ability to choose. I want to create a sketch, a line, and choose my plane. Now I have to, to create a sketch, and then I have to choose which plane that I want to sketch on. So right away, I have to choose a plane or planar face uh, to start out with. And I've already seen this in my training classes that this is reducing the number of misclicks uh, significantly. I miss it. I wish there was a way we could bring it back. But for new users, I'm sort of okay making that change uh, because I see how much better it is for them. So once I jump into a sketch, we'll notice a couple things. We still have the sketch palette here that I wish they could get rid of. There's some commands on here. I see no reason that they couldn't be added down to the menu down across here or, uh, or up on the toolbars or something like that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of having these uh, floating windows on my drawing space. So that's one of the things I don't like. It got a little bit better, but it's still not as good as I'd like it to be. So what we notice now is that all of the constraints are up on the toolbar. Some of these might be uh, collapsed and you can, if you want, if you have enough room, you can just expand these out and add things back up to the toolbar. Um, so that, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's a big deal for me to go from here to here versus here to here. Um, kind of feels like the same amount of movement to me. And I still think that this could be done better as well, but they have to kind of uh, incrementally go. Another thing you'll notice is that uh, when I'm in the sketch environment, I don't have assembly commands presented to me anymore because it, those don't make sense. Those aren't contextual. Um, so I think that's a better change as well. Now I can get some of the other tools if I want to by switching to the, you know, if I were to model a circle or sketch out a circle here, I can go to the solid command and start the extrude command even though um, I was in the sketch environment. So I can jump back and forth between the tabs, but it's not quite the same as offering me non-relevant uh, things to be able to do in the sketch environment. Let's go ahead and close this file down. And before we hop over into Inventor, I wanna talk about one of my favorite things from Inventor that's sort of in Fusion, but it's not nearly as easy to use as it is in Inventor right now. And that is the marquee menu. So maybe you've right clicked inside of Fusion and you've seen this radial menu up here. So with this radial menu, you have different commands that you can uh, access. And as you move your mouse over the different area, you'll see you get kind of a cone shape, a, a highlighted cone. I call this the cone of influence. And that lets you know in that general vicinity what command you're going to fire off. So if we go straight down, we'll notice that there's a sketch command. And when we get to the sketch um, drop down, we get different choices we can do. Um, I hopefully someday we'll be able to customize these for now. We can't, um, but these are the choices in the marking menu. So now I could go and grab my circle, choose my plane and drag out and draw whatever I want to there. So, uh, you might be saying, you know, whoop -de ding that's not a big deal. I just had to highlight over this for a second and then I could get to the command that I want. And that's the way that I see most people use the marking menu. But, um, there's a better way to do that. And we see this question a lot on the, on the forums or on the uh, Fusion Facebook page, is that when people right click and drag that they get this line and they wonder like, what is this line? So I'm just right clicking and moving around in the screen. Now what I'm doing is sort of crazy and I'm sort of hoping that it can't figure out what it, what it wants and it did figure it out and so I'll just say cancel on that. Um, the idea behind this is you can gesture the commands you want to go. So if I right click, I'll notice that sketch is straight down in circle center diameters up into the left. So if I wanted to do that command, I could I could gesture down first to get to the sketch menu and then up into the left to get to the circle. So I could go down, up, now I'm in the circle command. I pick a spot and there's my circle. Now if I right click, I can go back to that sketch menu and what we can see is straight across is the sketch dimension. So I could do that same thing by going down and straight across and now I'm in the sketch dimension command. The thing I don't like about this marking menu is I have to do that double move. I have to do the down first and then up, right, 
down, straight across, whatever it might be. In Inventor, we just simply drag the direction we want to go right away because there's not a double choice. So the marquee menu uh, is pretty amazing when you get used to it. You can really draw a lot faster that way. Uh, um, so I'm a big fan of the marquee menu. I am not a big fan of the double move in the program where I have to go this way and then that way. Another thing that people don't often know is right-clicking, uh, a lot of times will have OK or done uh, or cancel or OK back and forth. So those are pretty handy little features in the marquee menu and have, instead of having to hit enter or do whatever that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this sketch and we'll talk about a couple of things in here that I'm not a huge fan of. There is tons of unused room. So you can see on my com computer, there's all kinds of unused toolbar over here, but there's still commands in this dropdown menu that aren't on my toolbar. So every icon on the Fusion toolbar is exactly the same size. Now we'll see, I'll try to point this out when we're over in Inventor, um, but the Inventor team does this a little bit differently where there is a combination of larger icons and smaller icons. And for the most part, most of the things are available on your screen just right away and you don't have to hit any of these drop down menus to go and find the commands that you want. So that's one of the things that uh, I don't love about this UI either. I think that they could do a better job of utilizing the space. Um, there's lots of space between the icons and things like that. Uh, one of the other things that people often don't use inside of Fusion that can be super handy is the S key. The S key is, uh, it's modal. It understands what environment you're in and you can customize it per workspace. So here I just hit the S key and I have some commands that I've added on to this uh, shortcuts menu. I can also search for things here as well. Um, so I could type in the offset for an offset surface, an offset face, offset plane, whatever it might be. So you can type in different commands and get to the commands that you want to that way as well to kind of speed you up. So with that, let's jump over into Inventor a little bit and check things out over there. Okay, so here we are over in Inventor. If you've never seen Inventor before, this is sort of the UI for that. Um, this is a slightly older version of Inventor. It's 2019, so it's not super old. I just haven't installed the newest one yet. Um, and here you can see the different icons. Now, what I was saying earlier is some icons are bigger and some icons are smaller, but uh, the Inventor team seems to make far better use of the toolbars available to them. Um, and they also use a lot more of these tabbed UI uh, kind of functions. For instance, the cams in its own tabbed UI over here. So if I go over to my 3D model space again, um, occasionally you will find the ability to, uh, you can, you know, you'll have some other less commonly used parts in a drop down flyout. And I think you can right click and uh, actually make those expand out and be added to the ribbon if you want to. So because Inventor uses part files and assembly files and drawing files and sheet metal files and whatever it might be, the marquee menu that I was showing you guys earlier is highly customizable. So for instance, if I right click, you can see that I'm going to uh, get in a new sketch command right there. So if I want to, I could just drag straight down, pick my sketch plane. And now when I right click, I only have drawing commands. So if I want to do that same center point diameter or center point circle, I just go up in there and drag that out. Now if I right click, I could look and see the general dimension sort of down to the left. And so go over there, grab my dimension, say how big I want the circle to be. Then I could right click and choose okay. A right click again would be to finish the sketch straight down. So I could go down like that. And then up and to the right is my extrude command. And there I go and extrude that. So that wasn't uh, that wasn't a great demo because I was like, kind of explaining what I was doing the whole time. But if I were to say a new part and we kind of did that over, I could go straight down, pick my plane, up into the left, there's my circle. Down in the right, there's my dimension. Straight down to finish, up into the right to fire off the command. So because Inventor is very contextual, all the commands that it gave me uh, were relative to part modeling and therefore the right click menu was pretty uh, functional for getting the work done that I needed to do. And if we look, um, so part number two is a sheet metal part. If I right click, you can see now my marking menu is related to sheet metal tools. 
if I go to an assembly file and I right click, now my marking menus uh, related to uh, assembly tools. If I'm in a drawing environment and I right click, now my marking menus related to that drawing. So this is one of the areas where I think Autodesk is working on uh, is to compartmentalize Fusion a bit more um, so things are more contextual when you do them and you get the right command in the right environment that you're working in. So um, let's see what else uh, I can kind of show you guys. So we talked about this a little bit. If I go back to this, uh, this part, or maybe I'll just close this out and do another one. Sketch, I'm sorry, new part. Right click, new sketch, choose my plane. You can see in here that there is no menu on top of our screen. Now I don't like the docked browser anymore. I really prefer Fusion's floating browser over the docked browser like that. But the rest of the screen is clean. Um, you see that I've got some of these, like the slice tool and uh, different visibility things down here. I also have my navigation panel docked over on the side. So a little bit of the same, a little bit different but my entire drawing window is clean, unlike Fusion, where we have that floating palette on top of the screen. And again, here's where uh, Autodesk is making better use of the toolbar inside of Inventor. There's far more uh, command density here than there is inside of Fusion. Um, and some of these things still have to be expanded out, but you can add them or uh, ungroup them or whatever you want to do with these toolbars. So anyway, that's a look at Inventor. Now, I should have probably talked about this in the very beginning of the video, but um, I have no knowledge of what Autodesk is doing, and anything that I'm predicting in here is pure speculation on my part. Uh, just from knowing where they've been and sort of the changes that they're making, I'm sort of guessing about where they want to go. I think there's a high probability that I'll be right, uh, but I can't know that for sure. Uh, so hopefully you guys found that useful to see the old user interface in use, the new UI, uh, the things that Inventor does, and the things that I hope to see Fusion do in the future, and gives you a little bit better idea about why they're starting to incrementally change this user interface. I believe the primary uh, reason for that is to sort of make things more contextual uh, for different reasons and to help make the right-click menus more contextual as well. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And uh, I would love to hear your comments on this. I know a lot of you are pretty passionate about the changes. I, I like the new changes, and I hope they continue to move things forward and implement some of the other things that I talked about in this video. So thanks for watching, and hope you found it useful.